Hi everybody, welcome to Sculptured Painting. I'm Miss Leslie, and today we're going to be making this lovely sculptured tree on top of a canister. To complete the steps in this video, you'll need the following items from your kit. Two pieces of cardstock, one of your metal canisters, masking tape, and then toward the end, we'll be using Mod Podge, our stiff bristled brush, and some white tissue paper. For now, all we need are these three items to begin. So we are going to be building a tree on top of our canister. And in order to do that, we're going to use this cardstock to make the structure of the tree. So the first thing we want to do is take a piece, and we're going to roll it in our hands, sort of fold it and roll it lengthwise because we wanna make a tube shape out of this. So we just wanna soften up the paper a little bit. You can roll it like this, give it a little twist, warm it all up so it's nice and mushy. And then you're gonna open it up, it should be curved like this. And now the next step is we're going to tear the bottom and the top. And what those will end up being are the roots and the branches of our tree. So I'm going to start by making some short tears in one end. And I'm just doing them like an inch or two apart. And I want all of my tears to be about the same length. And then on the other end, I'm going to make some longer tears. These will be the branches. So the short tears are your tree roots. And the long tears will eventually be your branches. They don't have to be straight. They don't necessarily have to be all the same length, the top ones. Okay, so now we've got a piece of paper that looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these short ones on the bottom and fold them up like this. Okay. And then we can also take our branches and sort of push them out a little bit like that. So now you've got something that looks like this, okay? Now we're going to attach this to our canister, okay? Here's where we're gonna start needing to use some tape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this tube shut so that it makes a nice tree shape. Let's get some tape here. And I'm just gonna put a long piece down the seam, so shaky, like this, the seam on one side, and then I'm just gonna push it onto the other side of the tree. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect or straight or smooth because all of this tape will be covered up by so many more layers of tape and glue and fun things like that. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this. It's gonna sit on top of your canister. So we wanna tape down what will be our tree roots. We'll just use a couple little pieces of tape to do this initially. And you could make it so your tree is in the very center of your canister, or you can make it a little bit off to the side. I think they always end up being just a little bit crooked in my experience. So we're just taping this down so it's nice and secure. It doesn't have to look nice. And so far, at this point, it's not gonna quite yet look like tree roots. That will happen when we build on this later. So I wanna make sure each of these little five things here has a piece of tape on each side holding it down. And as you're taping and working on the bottom part of your tree, you can overlap and go over the side edge of your canister, but you don't wanna go past this metal edge of the lid because we still want it to be able to be removed easily. And I'm keeping the bottom part on for this just because I find it a little easier to hold. The tree stands up a little bit better when it's got some weight on the bottom. All right. A couple more pieces here. All right, so now we have a basic tree structure. 
Now we're gonna work on our branches up here. And the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my branches and I'm just gonna kind of tear it a little bit further down. I want this branch to be lower on the tree. So I'm just gonna make this branch start from down here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it, being careful not to rip it off. But if you do rip it off, you can always just tape it back on. I'm gonna fold this and mush it. What I'm doing really is sculpting this cardboard into a more three-dimensional shape. If any of you did miss John Lee's um, paper bag tree video, very similar, although we don't wanna twist it, but it's the same basic concept. All right, so we're gonna do this with all of our branches. Mush them into shape. And the last one. We can add more branches onto this as we go as well. So you won't be stuck with just five branches. In fact, I would recommend specifically not doing only five branches because then it's gonna to tend to look like a hand going like this. Okay, so next step is we're gonna wrap these branches in some tape. I'm just gonna choose one to start with and I'm wrapping the tape sticky side toward the cardboard, not sticky side out. And I'm just gonna really messily wrap that up. We're gonna do several, several layers of tape here. So don't feel like any one of your layers has to look a particular way because no one's gonna see it in the end. We wanna wrap this branch a few times to make it nice and secure, nice and thick. And the more tape we put on the branches at this point, the more moldable they'll be so that once we have our tree ready, you can sort of bend the branches into where you want them to go. Okay, so I'm going to do this to all of the branches. So now we have all of our individual branches covered in tape. And our next step is gonna to be to go in and do something about this floppiness. And we need to fill in this space right here. So first I'm gonna start by securing around the ripped edges of all the little branches so that they don't rip any further. I'm just gonna tape, take a small piece of tape and just sort of bend it in the fold there. And secure the branches to each other and to the base. Just like this. And as I'm doing that, I can kind of position the branch into where I want it to be, basically. Another piece over here. And like I said, we're going to be adding on many, many layers on top of this so that by the time we're done, our tree will be very strong and these branches will have no fear of breaking not even in the strongest thunderstorm. That's a joke, don't leave this out in the rain. It'll definitely <laughs> break in a real thunderstorm. Okay, so now you see I've got my branches all basically secured and you can see how they're bendable. You can sort of shape them however you want. But before we do that, we're gonna fill in this little hole right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of tape and just go across the hole, like I'm making a little bridge out of tape, like that. So our tree will be hollow, but even hollow trees serve a purpose in nature because all kinds of animals live in there and store their seeds for their winter and all of that good nature stuff. So hollow trees are just as useful as ones that are solid. Okay, so now we have that all basically covered. I'm gonna just kind of go around, push your tape down, make sure it's sticking. This is not the stickiest tape, so 
anything you can do to make it stickier or make it more secure, you should do that. Okay. The tree's a little crooked on the bottom, so I'm gonna add some more tape here. Okay. So now that we have our roots secured, our branches pretty secure, we're gonna secure the trunk by wrapping some tape around the trunk just to make it more strong. This also can be lumpy, but I'm just kind of wrapping the tape around it in a spiral. I'm gonna do probably three or four long pieces of tape to make it nice and strong. And then again, don't worry about what this tape looks like because it's all gonna be covered up in the end. No one will ever see this layer. Just sort of make sure the tape is pushed down. You can mush your tree into shape if it's too much of a circle and you want it to be lumpier, you just give it a little squeeze. I like a lumpy tree. I think it's very natural looking. Take some of my extra piece of tape and just come across the top here, sort of weave my way through the branches. So I'm gonna do that again on another branch so you can see it. I'm gonna start down here and then just sort of pull my piece of tape up through the middle. I wanna go in between all of these places and here I'm gonna loop it around. And this is all just to make it strong. None of this will be seen. That seems pretty good. Okay, I feel like that's pretty secure. Now the loosest part here, you can see it kind of wiggles, are the roots. So I'm gonna start to work on building up these roots and I'm gonna do a couple of things to give this a little shape around the edges so that it doesn't just look like a straight tree going into the ground. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few medium sized pieces of tape and roll them into sticky little tape balls. So I'm gonna put this on its side so you can see. I'm gonna crumple up a piece of tape and just sort of stick it right next to, well, maybe. Stick it right next to where the tree meets the canister. When you're crumpling, try to crumple it so it's sticky side out. And I'm just gonna make some, some lumps around here that we're eventually going to put tape over that's gonna help this tree be a little bit more sturdy looking. So more crumples of tape with the sticky side out. Put one right here. Just stick that there. Stick it there, stick. Another one next to it. And then because these aren't sticking super great, I'm actually gonna tape it down like this. Just make sure that it's not going anywhere. Go like this as well, and stick it up to the tree. So now you can see how the tree looks a little bit wider at the base. Now that I have some widened root branches, I'm gonna do a little test on this and see if it's strong enough to move on to the next step. So what I want is to be able to grab this tree and pull the lid off without the tree separating from the lid. So I'm gonna give it a little tug. All right, it comes off, but you know what? It's still a little wobbly. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a whole bunch more tape around the base and anywhere that I can still see blue cardboard like here, that's not taped down, I'm gonna make sure there's tape putting that down. Even if that means the whole top of this is gonna be covered in tape, that's totally fine.
Now I think I've got enough tape on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and push it down all the way around, make sure there's no little pieces sticking up. Oh, there's a little spot that needs covering. Okay. All right, I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is adding texture and some extra branches to this tree so it doesn't look like a hand. Now for this, we are going to be using the technique we've used before with rolled pieces of tape with the sticky side on the outside. So if you have your piece of tape, you wanna roll it kind of diagonally, but so the sticky side is out. And it's okay to mush this. It doesn't have to be a perfect tube. In fact, the lumpier, the better. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom of my tree. I'm just gonna pick a part, pick a side here to start on. And I'm going to put this little tree texture all the way up the side and all the way up whatever branch is nearest. Okay, this is gonna give us the texture of bark tree bark as opposed to dog bark, <laughs> which not very textured, depending on how you look at it. All right, so I'm gonna, after I've done my first little stripe here, I'm just gonna keep adding little strips of sticky side out tape right next to each, the last one that I did. And I'm gonna do that all the way around the tree. I'll show you a few more rolls. Roll your tape sticky side out. Doesn't matter how thin or thick it is. You're gonna, you're gonna start your tape roll down here by the edge of the canister so that it's part of the tree roots too, not just the bark ending at the trunk. Okay. And you notice that as I start, I started over here and it kind of went in a curved Kind of went in a curved way up around here and that's fine because that's kind of how trees grow. They bend and twist as they reach toward the sunlight and that's what makes their texture so interesting. So I'm going to continue to go around putting tape around all of these sides and then once I have the bottom I'm going to work my way up towards doing more of the branches but I am going to be doing some tape that comes up and fills in the branches here. All right, now that we have the trunk pretty much basically covered with rolls of tape all the way around, this is all sticky on the outside. And we have most of the roots done here, but I'm gonna come in and add just a few more little pieces to sort of elongate these roots and make them come out a little bit further. Now that we have this all basically lined up, I'm just gonna pinch around the roots and make sure everything is nice and stuck down. I don't want it coming flying off. Time to do another test. Piece of cake, pull the lid off without any problem of losing the tree. 
So I'm gonna tape down the ends of these and then we're gonna move on to working on making those branches a little bit thicker and more lively. Okay. All right. So you notice some of your tape rolls may have come up and come around into the middle of your tree or wrapped up around your branches. We're just gonna continue that. We're gonna continue adding to the branches and we're gonna do some tape rolls that are pretty, not as long, but maybe a little thicker. I tend to roll the tape pretty skinny um, and then mush it up. But this time you might wanna take your tape, roll it up and then bend it in half. And then we're gonna add that to a branch, starting right below it and then just sort of mushing it onto what's already there. This is also going to be kind of a long process. The main goal is to make sure your branches are secure so that they don't flop around by themselves. And that they won't get like torn off if you accidentally bump it or something. So on each branch, I will probably do at least four or five rolls of tape maybe more because these ones I'm using are long. You can see they're sticking out from here's where the branch ended before. And I have these two pieces here that are longer. I'm going to use them to make another branch. So I'm just going to bend this one over here, give it a little twist. And I'm going to add to that and fill in. Actually, I think I'm going to wrap it up first and then I'm going to add more rolled tape on the outside. So I'm wrapping it, just wrapping it with a piece of tape, sticky side down. It's hard because the other tape around it is sticky. And I wanna kind of put some tape here in the joint where it dis dis departs from the rest of the branch. We wanna make sure we have some tape wrapped around here too so that that branch doesn't get torn up. So I'm just taking small pieces of tape to secure that. And then I'm gonna do the same on this part of the branch. Just wrapping it up. So again, for this part, we're not using tape rolls. I'm just using little pieces of tape to make it nice and secure, and then we will add tape rolls on top of it. I want a little bit more around here. Just give it some more structure. Like with all of our sculptured painting product projects, it's important to check it from all angles. So you might wanna turn it upside down so you can look at the bottom part of your branches too, and make sure that those are secure. Because from where I'm looking on mine, they are definitely not. So I'm gonna tape that off. Awkward angles here. Okay, so now I've got two little branches and they're kind of flexible. I can sort of pose them the way I want them to be. Not too hard around here, but I can mush them into shape, give them a little bit of a curve if I want to. All right. So that is how you add branches. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these branches. We'll do a sped up version. And in the middle, we're just gonna kind of leave this alone for now. Um, but as we go, I wanna show you one more thing that I'm gonna do to some of these branches that is a little bit different. So we have this one that we added onto. Now I've got this guy here, it's just kind of sticking out and he doesn't have a very secure connection to the tree trunk. So I'm gonna do my little trick. Now that I added that extra branch, it won't lay flat. <laughs> I'm gonna do the little rolled up ball of tape with the sticky side out. And I'm gonna, which branch was it? This one. I'm gonna stick it kind of in the armpit of the branch, okay? To give it a little bit of thickness where the branch meets the tree 
because that's the thickest part of the branch is where it comes right out of the tree. It's just like how where your arm comes out of your body, your shoulder is thicker than your elbow or your wrist. So I'm just thickening up the base of this branch. There we go. I'm gonna add one more little chunk. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna continue on with tape rolls, cover the rest of my branches, maybe add an additional branch on one of the other ones. All right, now we have our basic coverage here of the branches, the roots, the trunk. So I'm just checking all around to make sure I don't see any blue cardstock sticking out of my branches. And I do see a little bit here, and that's not a problem visually, but just to make sure that it's structurally sound and isn't gonna fall apart at some point, I wanna make sure it's covered up. So I'm just gonna add more tape rolls with the sticky side out, any place that I might see any blue sticking through or any major holes. So take a few more minutes here to just sort of go around, check, check yourself. And then we're going to move on to sort of just adding a little bit more to the middle here so that it's Actually, it's not that bad, but I am going to put just a few more tape rolls in there and I want to show you how to do it to sort of cover up some area that is, you know, would be making a bark on the tree, but isn't part of the branch. I'm going to start up this branch a little bit and then I'm going to bring my tape roll down here 
So I'm just going to sort of crunch it up, crunch it up and lay it down. So that'll give some texture to that middle area that was formerly a hole, but which we covered up. So start up in your branch. And there's really no right or wrong way to do this in terms of pattern. Just kind of want to make sure you have coverage. Because while this tree is just a hollow tube of cardboard, there's no reason for anyone to see down into that hollow tube. So we can make sure it's fully hidden. And while you're doing this, you want to make sure there's no loose ends of tape tubes sticking up. You don't want any open-ended uh, rolls of tape because when we go to put the Mod Podge and tissue paper on, that's going to be hard to fill. But if you just pinch the ends of those together, then it won't be a problem at all. And I'm, As I'm going here, I'm discovering more and more little holes that need to be filled in. And you can do that by pinching and sculpting your tape, since this is sculptured painting, and adding more rolls of tape where necessary. And if you need to just use little pieces to tape the ends down, that's fine too. Um, since we will be using Mod Podge with our tissue paper, if you have some tape that is not sticky side out, that's okay. It won't affect your ability to get it done. All right, I think that's pretty good. Take one last look at my branches, mold them, shape them the way I want them to be for the final product because once I put the tissue paper on, they're not going anywhere. Still kind of looks like a claw, but I like it. I'm down with it. Now the purpose of this container when you're done can be a couple of different things. You can store things in here, um, but also you can use these branches to hang things on got jewelry or keychains or you know your hand sanitizer dispenser you can hang it on there all right so that is the end of our tape step and our next part is going to be putting on the tissue paper and the mod podge so for this you're just going to need white tissue paper to start with and a stiff bristled brush not a soft one and we're going to cover this whole thing in strips of tissue paper we're gonna use our brush to push it down in there, and then we're gonna cover the whole thing in a layer of Mod Podge. And then that will be the end of this video, and the second video will be painting your tree, okay? So I'm gonna start by tearing up multiple strips of just white tissue paper. Since I'm gonna paint over this, I don't wanna use colored tissue paper, but you can have some pretty big pieces here. They don't need to be tiny. Like when we were working on the glass votives, that was tiny pieces. So I'm going to just try to rip up as much as I can so I don't have to stop and do it in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to start down toward the bottom and I'm just going to use my hands to start with and then I'll go back in and grab my brush and use that I'm going to start at the edge of the roots and I'm just going to use my fingers to get this tissue paper stuck to all of the tape all over the tree. I'm going to push it down in the root into the grooves of the tape and you can see it's starting to wrinkle up and that's great. We want wrinkles. Wrinkles equal texture and that friends is what sculptured painting is all about. Texture. Okay, so you can smooth it with your fingers and you can also use your brush to push it down in the grooves.
All right, I've got my tree covered in tissue paper and you can see there's some spots where I didn't put tissue paper and that's because this part of the tape is not sticky. Um, so I'll need to apply some Mod Podge to that. So now this next and final step of this video is going to be to paint this whole thing with Mod Podge and continue to layer more tissue paper so that every bit of the edge and every piece of masking tape is covered. The reason we use tissue paper to cover the masking tape instead of just painting directly on top of it is because masking tape is not great at having paint stick to it. So if you were to paint on top of masking tape, you can do that, but it might, uh, it more easily will rub off or flake off if your project gets bumped or bent. So I'm just squeezing some Mod Podge out into my lid here. I'm gonna use my brush, dip it in there. You don't need to get the brush wet, but you wanna make sure that you rinse it off when you're done so the glue doesn't dry in there. And I'm just gonna start by putting a nice layer on the tissue paper that's here. And I don't like to do the whole thing at once. I like to work in little sections so that I can, first of all, always have a dry area to hold it that's not sticky, and then add my additional tissue paper as I go while the Mod Podge is wet. So first step here is to put the Mod Podge down on top of this tissue paper. And then you can just use your brush to pick up another piece of tissue paper and stick it on top of that Mod Podge. And then more Mod Podge. So it's glue, tissue paper, glue. And we're gonna make sure that we get around all of these edges here so that there's no holes between, uh, no holes where you could see under the tree or go theoretically like inside the tree because we wanna make sure that it is secure. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna speed the video up here while I go through and Mod Podge this whole thing. I'm gonna do the trunk first, then the branches and then double check to make sure that everything is sealed.
All right, so we've got everything covered with Mod Podge and tissue paper. Just doing a final check to make sure there's no holes. And by holes, I mean spots where the tape is showing through or just big gaps in the tissue paper. Um, and the reason we don't want that is because that can make it hard to paint. I'm just squeezing a little bit more Mod Podge into the center here. Now I wanna point out a couple of things I wish I had done differently. I wish I had used a smaller brush because it was very difficult to get around these branches with this big fat guy. So if you have a smaller brush um, that has kind of stiff bristles like this, definitely use that. And secondly, I didn't rip up enough tissue paper before I started. Also, this took about a half a bottle of Mod Podge, which is quite a lot. And this for me was the bottom half of my bottle. So it was difficult to get out. That's why I ended up putting the lid back on and just squeezing it onto the thing. Another problem with the big brush as well is that it soaks up a lot of the Mod Podge. So in order to be less wasteful and more frugal with your art supplies, use a smaller brush for that part. So that does it for part one of tree canister. Come back for part two and we'll see how to paint it. Thanks, see you soon. Thank you.